Holy smokes, all you have to do is watch the news or read a newspaper and you can see that a lot is going on in our world, especially as it relates to money. We got inflation, we have ridiculously high gas prices, the cost of food keeps going up, we have the Fed raising interest rates, new home purchases are not happening like they were, there's a war going on, there's a, a crypto collapse going on, so much is going on right now and what it's doing is causing and stoking so much fear in people and I get it. So what we're going to do in this episode are talk about some things that you can do to ensure that you are recession proof and taking the right steps to protect yourself. We're talking to an amazing financial advisor that's going to share some really interesting information that, by the way, is not advice. It's just information for you to learn from. Of course, talk to your own financial professional to make whatever decisions you want to make. But we're getting some really unique insight to what's going on right now. But before we do, hey, I want to let you know, about seven years ago, I started participating in something called Man Morning. Every Thursday, me and a group of guys would get together at 7 a.m. for a hike. And we'd have coffee or tea and we would talk about life. We'd talk about business. We'd talk about marriage. We'd talk about kids. We'd talk about struggles, you name it. And I can tell you firsthand from doing these weekly Man Mornings, my life has improved across the board. It has improved with my happiness. It has improved with my health and fitness. It has helped improve my money and my business and my relationships, my marriage, being a dad and all those kind of things. And Man Morning has had such a profound effect on my life. I decided to start a newsletter called, you guess it, Man Morning. Man Morning is a three-minute newsletter. For the man who wants to wake up each morning with a greater sense of purpose and community. And I haven't talked about this much, but this newsletter is blowing up. So if you are a man that wants to get in on that, if you could use that in your life, if you know a man that could benefit from something amazing coming into their inbox every single day, make sure you head over to manmorning.com. Once again, manmorning.com. It's a free newsletter that's going to have a positive impact on your life. That link is in the show notes. Okay, without further ado, let's get into episode 133. Hey, what's good? Welcome to the Antonio Neves Show, where I remind you each and every week that no matter where you stand today, your story isn't over. The best is ahead. I'm your host, Antonio Neves. I am the founder of the Man Morning Newsletter. I am the author of Stop Living on Autopilot. That book right there is available now all across the globe in multiple languages. I'm also a speaker and success coach, but most importantly, I am a husband and father. And today I have a treat for you because joining me for an amazing conversation is Chris Gervais. Chris is the co-founder of Five Oceans Advisors and he is a certified financial advisor. We're going to talk about things that you can do to be quote unquote recession proof with so many different things happening in the world and in the economy right now. Listen, we talk about so many different things that it's going to blow your mind and I know it's going to educate you and it's going to be so helpful. But before we get into the conversation, I want to make sure you know that the opinions expressed in this conversation, in this program, are for general informational purposes only and not intended to provide you with specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security. This information is only intended to provide, ed provide you with education about the financial industry. We're not selling you anything. So I wanted to get that disclosure out of the way. If you have decisions to make as it relates to your money, your investments, make sure you talk to a certified financial professional who can support you and guide you and provide you with expertise. 
This right here is just a conversation. So without further ado, let's get into this amazing conversation with Chris Garibase from Five Oceans Advisors. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Let's get into it. So look, if you tune into the news these days, if you open up a newspaper, we're hearing so much with the economy, whether we are in a recession, not in a recession. We're talking about inflation. You're hearing about all these tech companies and other organizations having layoffs. Of course, we see a plunge in crypto and those numbers and major bankruptcies happening with big crypto companies. Uh, we regularly are hearing about the Federal Reserve and something called BPS and basage, <laughs> basis points. We're, we're hearing about so many different things. My question to you and the work that you do and the clients you talk to, what do you tell people to pay attention to and what do you tell people to ignore? You know, this may, this may not sound uh, very technical from, uh, from a financial person here, but you know what my messaging is always, whether, whether in a recession or not, is actually to not pay attention to most of all of the things you just described. The messaging is pay attention to the things you can control. Federal Reserve raising interest rates, uh, what's, what's happening around the world in both supply chain, the, the war that's going on, and I can rattle off probably uh, an immeasurable number of other things to be worried about. The fact of the matter is the world is always uncertain, so this uncertainty is normal. And if you're paying too much attention to all of these economic indicators and particularly financial news, which I would argue is designed mostly to get your eyeballs on the screen, not to provide you good financial, sound financial advice, you're not paying attention to the right things. It's a lot of things you can't control. So my messaging is take your attention and turn it right back in, onto what's happening in your house maybe with your job or your business, your family's expenses, uh, th things like that. You bring up a really good point. I think we forget that we live on a planet, right? <laughs> That's hurtling through space. And recently, NASA or somebody like deflected a meteor from hitting our planet. Things are always uncertain, but we think, you know, things are always a lot. So I, I like that, that perspective you give us. I, I want to provide some real things that people can focus on, some real tangible if you will, advice. I want to be clear what, what Chris is providing here, what we're going to talk about is not direct financial advice. I want you to consult with a financial professional before you make any decisions relating to your life, investments, et cetera. But from a big picture perspective, one of the things you talk about, Chris, during challenging times, but I'm also, I'm pretty sure you'd say this during any times, is paying attention to your lifestyle costs. What would you define as lifestyle costs and how can people look at them? Well, this one's kind of a no-brainer, you know. It's it's um, it's the extra expenses that you probably don't need in your life. You you have them, especially when times are good. But look, all the things like all the extra subscription services you've piled up over the years and maybe haven't looked at in a while. Eating out. If you really are in a situation where you perhaps aren't as prepared as you would like to be financially, aka. Um, having a you know solid emergency fund, or as I call it sometimes, protective reserve, then you, then of course you're going to look at cutting the the expenses that aren't necessary, that aren't essential in your life. And I think that that's something that everybody should be doing and and looking at, so that you can withstand the downturn that we're in. And the thing is, we don't know how long this is going to last. So you could put that off. You could put. Uh, sitting down with with your spouse or with yourself for a couple of hours and looking your expenses off for a while longer, but I wouldn't recommend it because none of us knows. What we don't know is how far we're going to go down, and how long we're going to go down, how long we're going to stay down, I should say. So I, I think that's an obvious no brainer to to get into your to get into your expenses and go through line item by line item. It's not a fun thing. People don't like doing that, but guess what? Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And I did that. I did that with my business perspective and a personal perspective. And here's what's interesting. When you go line by line, Chris, you find stuff that you forgot that you're paying for. I found a subscription that I wanted to punch myself in the face. I think I was paying $49 a month for something for my business that I had not used in months. Months, but it was there. And I guess the pain point wasn't high enough that I didn't remove it. But to your point, when you take that, 30 minutes or 20 minutes to go through some old statements. It's a game changer. You'll find all this stuff that you're no longer using, you no longer need. Also, something else that I found recently, Chris, you know what? For our dishwasher, 
that store brand cleans those dishes just as good as the brand name. <laughs> am, am, am I right? Hundred percent. You know, and, and we're talking about playing defense right now, and there's only so much defense you can play, cutting expenses, right? The answer is not always just cut all your expenses and stay in your house and don't do anything. I'm a lot more excited about playing offense, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a few minutes. But look, it the, at the end of the day, it cannot hurt to go through your expenses and get rid of the stuff that really isn't adding any value to your life. Yeah, let's talk about playing to win here in a second. But something you've always advocated, you know, and, and I work working together, Chris, is always stacking your chips, right? Saving that money. And you always talk about having like a, a protective reserve and what what does a, a quote-unquote protective reserve look like look like for someone and, I, and to your point earlier this is something we should be doing regardless of what's happening the in the economy this is something we should do just in general 100 percent. you want to prepare for the storm before the storm comes so look fact of the matter is if you haven't built up a, a protective reserve emergency fund whatever you want to call it before this time you know all, all i could say is look don't let it happen again but the, the reason why it's so important, it's actually a lot more important than, than people think, even, even those that are familiar with an emergency fund or protective reserve. Um, you know, some of the, the standard financial advice out there, first thing you'll hear is save up six months of expenses, right? I think a lot of people just sort of like, okay, that makes sense and, and just sort of let that go. But here's, let me give you a why it is so important to have. And, and we're talking about money that is in cash. Yes, it is not meant to make you a big return on your investment. It's meant to protect you during during times like we're facing right now. But why is this so important? Here's a different perspective on this. When you are, I'd say for the vast majority of people under 50 years old, the most valuable asset on your balance sheet is your human capital. It's something you can't even see on your balance sheet. That is your ability to get up every day and work and produce income. And that's whether you're an employee earning a salary or whether you own a business, right? And that's a real thing. It is the most valuable asset in your balance sheet. That, and so what does that even mean? Well, think about all of the future cash flows that you're going to generate by getting up with your human productivity every day over the next years or decades. If you take a present value calculation of all those future cash flows, which I'll explain that here in a second, that is a big number, meaning that compared to if I had a portfolio of investments or a piece of real estate, whatever, whatever asset, if I had an asset that was going to spit off this much cash flow every single year for the next, like I said, 20 years, if you're going to work for 20 years longer, how big of an asset or portfolio would that need to be? The answer is really big. It is a very valuable thing. So what does this protective reserve help you from doing? Well, it helps you from if you were to find yourself in a situation where you need to where where you lost your job, you're looking for for new work. If you don't have a protective reserve, what's going to happen? You're going to freak out. Money's going to start getting really tight, and you're going to go take the next job that is offered to you, even if it means a pay cut from where you were before. That pay cut is a big deal. So you didn't provide yourself an opportunity to take your time. You know, come uh, investigate, find the right opportunity at the same income or higher, that pay cut, that that lower cash flow over the next years and decades is is more of a pay cut than than people realize. That human capital is so is so valuable. So that's why it's important. It's important so you don't have to change your lifestyle so much during downtimes, not having to skimp and you know cut everything out of your life. Um, and it's important for for peace of mind. Peace of mind is critical. And you bring up a really good point about how we are our most valuable asset. And I don't think a lot of people view it like that, like our time, our energy, how we spend it. Like we are the most valuable asset, but I think we always look externally as opposed to internally in those situations. And we're going to talk about how in a little bit about the things that we can control when so much is out of our control. We'll talk about that in a second. Going back to this notion of playing offense and, and playing to win you know, a refrain you'll hear a lot from people in times like these when you see dips in the stock market or say dips in real estate, et cetera, you hear people say, oh, right now I'm going to quote unquote buy the dip or, oh, there's a lot of bargains right now. You, you hear these, and you tell me if these are tall tales or not, but it sounds like there are a lot of people historically who have actually got rich during these times that they've earned their wealth, not like immediately, but what they were able to buy, what they were able to invest in times like these. How do you view that accurate or a falsehood? Absolutely accurate. 
you know, when, uh, when a recession happens for somebody who is young and in their working years, perhaps in their highest income years, if you're talking about someone in their, you know, later 40s or 50s, it really a recession, uh, a recessionary period or a market dip absolutely represents opportunities to buy. And the way you make money in investing, any kind of investing, I don't care what it is, is you buy low and sell high, uh, not the other way around. And so when there's fear and uncertainty, around the world, opportunities to buy definitely present themselves. Now it's not that easy. It's not it sounds simple, but it's not easy. You you don't you don't just know exactly, you know, which company is gonna is gonna actually recover and give you a huge return on investment. And so that's a whole other conversation about owning a really broadly diversified portfolio, owning lots of companies instead of instead of one. But yes, I don't think that's a tall tale at all. Buying on discount is a big deal and for you know, for older folks who aren't working anymore, these periods are much tougher on them than they are uh, on they are than they are for younger folks. And um, for us, let's just buy, buy, buy during these yeah, and, times. And of course, obviously, work with a financial professional if you're making decisions like that. Yeah, I'm imagining. Let's talk about fear for a quick second. And older people, for example, I'm just imagining some older man who's retired wearing a robe, and he's on his computer. And he's regularly checking his retirement or he's checking his portfolio and where it was five years ago versus today, he or she is, is seeing that steady decline. And I know firsthand from talking to people in my family, Chris, when people see those numbers go down, so many people have an inclination to say, let me sell this now before it gets any lower. And, you know, I always think is, is you don't register a loss until you hit that sell button, right? So yeah. how do you view people who are in fear panic mode right now? And they're like, I better, you know, cash this out now before it goes any lower. And speaking specifically to the, the, the older population. Well, you know, it goes back to the same answer of those protective assets, the protective reserve. So I, I, I uh, don't want to, you know, only keep on focusing, on focusing on a protective reserve. If you don't have one and we're sitting here talking about what can you do now? Well, you know, that that's a tough thing to hear. But the answer to that is that your protective assets should be large enough such that you're not freaking out and feeling like you need to sell all the assets that you have exposed to to growth investments, which is going to be stuff that can go up and down. Uh, when that protective reserve is, is big enough, you're not, you know, you're, you're not, you're not feeling like I, I, if I don't, if I lose more money in these growth investments that are going down right now, I'm going to have to change my life drastically. If you're in that situation, that unfortunately is, I know we're not talking about giving specific financial advice here, that unfortunately is a symptom of simply not being prepared before before the storm comes. And on that note, I want to talk about even for younger people that back to the protective reserve again, here we go. It's if you are forced, we all none of us want to sell investments when they're down. Okay. Because when you do, you're participating in permanent wealth destruction. You put money in, it goes down, you sell, you're not there for the ride back up. You you just lost money and you're and you're never gonna get that back. And so that protective reserve also allows you to not be forced into a situation where you need to dig into those investments when they're down. So that's just another another really important part. So at, for older folks, you got to have more protective assets. Simple as that. And for quick perspective on that, Chris, you know something you you've been so helpful with us and our family and a lot of the education that you do with, with your clients is right now. It's funny we're looking at a snapshot of 2022 of what's happening right now. You know, of course, we can look at COVID and everything that happened in 2020. But I think what we forget to do, especially as it relates to the market, is not just look at the past two years or five years, but stretch, stretch that out and look at the past 20, 30, 50 years. When we, when we look at a bigger picture of the market or, or economy, what do we see? We see that what we're experiencing right now isn't all that abnormal. Is that fair to say? Antonio, since I think, that, I think it's since 1946, there have been 11 or 12 recessions. This is one every six years. So I completely agree with you. If you're able to zoom out, which by the way, sometimes you need someone to help you do that because it's hard to, you know, it's life, life is hard and it's scary and the world is uncertain. Uh, but if you're able to zoom out, what you realize is that a lot of the stuff that you see out there actually is not that abnormal. It feels abnormal. It feels, it feels like it's never happened before and it's unprecedented. But you, you realize when you zoom out that it's, it's really nothing but normal market cycles. And of course, just because something's never happened before doesn't mean it, it can't happen at, you know, at some point in the future. But we've even had, we've even had 
well, I was going to get into market downturns that have stayed down for really, really long periods of time. That's that's normal too. Uh, but yeah, zooming out really helps. And unless you're only planning on, you know, living and investing and being financially responsible for the next two to five years, it probably is a good <laughs> idea to zoom out. Zoom out at the big picture. Hey, I want real quick. You know, I spend a decent amount of time on social media in my world and the work that I do. And it's pretty much impossible nowadays, Chris, not to be on Instagram or Twitter and more and more on, on LinkedIn. And you're seeing a lot of invitations going out to people. Times are tough. Invest in this course or invest in this service to increase your income to, do, you know, just all these, these kind of, I'll call them schemes, if you will, to put some money in your pocket. Would you say in times like these, I think I know the answer, folks are more susceptible to these, these uh, get rich quick schemes than they otherwise would be. And, and how do you view how people should look at those? I think folks are more susceptible uh, for the simple fact of desperate times, def- desperate measures, where the worse things get, the more the more you might be looking for a quick fix. But I do want to I do want to separate out one thing you mentioned, Antonio. So courses, for example, my mind just goes to you know self development, and, and I actually I'm a huge fan of that. The reason is, guess what? It goes back to the human capital. If I invest in myself and I even increase my income by Thirty thousand dollars, twenty thousand, even five. That does, might not sound like a lot, but again, if I'm working for the next twenty years, which I plan to do, I'm forty-one. I plan to work for at least that that amount of time. Which, by the way, means that, and I hope for most people that uh, that you actually enjoy what you're doing. But the point is, those little increases over those long time periods adds up to a massive difference in the value of your human capital. So I'm into spending money, even in recessionary periods, into investing in yourself, broadening and deepening your skill set and your knowledge and things like that. However, where I want to make a separation is the start this business and you're going to make all this money and then we're going to give you the testimonials of the people that made $30,000 in their first month. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of crap out there. And I do worry that during recessionary periods where you know you, you get desperate, you start wanting to throw that Hail Mary and you, you buy the thing that, uh, that you can get rich quick. And man, I see so many of those out there. And I just know from experience that it never works out that way. It doesn't mean those businesses can't work, but they're always going to take much longer. They're always going to be way harder, tougher than you think they are that you're being told. You're not going to make as much money either. So I, I largely definitely recommend people to stay away from those get rich quick opportunities. Yeah. And of course, do your due diligence. Don't make those decisions in isolation in a silo. If you're considering making some type of investment, talk to people, get feedback, talk to a financial professional, et cetera. Uh, and Chris, what a great reminder. I think we forget about the snowball effect of the, of that beautiful thing called compound interest that uh, people, unfortunately, don't, we don't really learn too much in schooling uh, in middle school or our high school years, but that's another conversation. So we mentioned that there's so much that we, we can't control, right? I can't control the economy. I, I can't control recessions. I can't control how many people are going to get laid off or bankruptcies, all those things. But there are some things in our wheelhouse, you know, that people have heard me talk about on the podcast that we can't control. So let's talk about that for a quick second. You know, regardless of the current, your, your current financial status, one thing you always talk about, and it may not seem like it aligns with what we're talking about, but it does. But one of those things is either getting in and staying in shape in times like these. Why do you think something like that, you know, that, that, that physical prowess is so important? It's because it bleeds over into all the other aspects of your life. Your, your, your mental toughness, your ability to get up and, and have energy every day to take, to take on each day, even in the face of all the scary news that's happening out there, even in the face of friends and family members, or maybe even, even yourself getting laid off. Staying in shape just it, it creates and look, I'm not I'm not the expert on this. I'm a I'm a financial advisor and I know you and, and a lot of other experts out there um, are constantly beating this drum and I couldn't agree with it more. It's when you feel good inside your body, which is one of the few things in this world that we can control, that we have control over. It is a discipline that gets created to that 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 just maps over to the, the relationship that you're in, the, the spouse that you are, the, the parent that you are, um, the friend and coworker that you are, all, all those things. And uh, it just makes you feel better all the way around. So look, this reminds me of, this reminds me of the pandemic. 
I think a lot of people did do a great job. Maybe initially people got a little bit, I'll speak for myself, a little bit sloppy on the on the health nutrition front. But then when we realized this was going to last a long time, I saw a lot of people get in really good shape and do things, get creative with their fitness. And, and I think, and I think in, t- you know, recessionary time, like we're in right now, it's just another good opportunity to be reminded of how important that is and, and focus on it. I agree 100%. And I, I can speak firsthand. I mean, when I'm in good physical shape, when I'm eating well, when, I, when I'm treating my body, like you said, like investing in my body, like that billion dollar body that we all have, bro, it, it helps me attack other areas of my life so much better. Like when I'm not feeling good, when I'm lethargic, when I'm eating like crap, you have that too many glasses of wine the night before, how you attack the day versus attacking it with, with being healthy, with working out are just two different people. I can better take on challenges when I feel great and good in my body. So just a, a great reminder for everyone. I'm going to make a, a, a leap here. Um, and, and this is kind of getting into the field of financial therapy, and I'm not a financial therapist. But I believe that getting and staying in shape and feeling good in your body leads to better financial decisions. It's when you're insecure, you end up buying stuff you don't need. It's when you don't have energy, you end up hitting that drive through instead of going to the store and coming home and cooking. It, it really does map over to, to, spe- to specific financial decisions as well. Man, you just struck a nerve. I almost thought we, you went to church for a quick second. I was about to say preach because somebody heard that. I heard that. Like it, it does. It has a 100% powerful effect on everything else. And, you know, it, it taps into that emotion, right? The, the bad decisions we make when we're not taking care of ourselves to fill that void. I didn't anticipate asking this question, Chris, but I, I'm curious how you view this, going back to the things that we can control. A lot of people are in relationships. They have a partner. They have a spouse. And I can tell you, I have to remind myself to regularly have those conversations with my wife during, quote unquote, not just challenging times, but even good times. It's it's easy not to have that quick update on the finances, on investments, what's happening right now. What have you observed with the people that you work with? Is that one of the benefits of having someone like like you and your team that those conversations are going to happen that maybe otherwise would not happen? Well, look, there's no doubt in my mind from personal experience with with my own wife and uh, and working with clients that when there is better communication, so whether that's more frequent, more in depth, <clears throat> etc. It really just places you both, two spouses, that is, on the same team. And when you're feeling like you're both on the same team, decisions are easier, decisions are more supported. So, if, you know, for example, um, I want to make a decision, but I, you know, I have two options. I can make it in isolation of speaking with, uh, with my wife and I can go do that, or I can speak with her and we can feel, we can feel like we're on the same team about it. And I go make that that same decision. Maybe the decision is the same either way, but dude, I feel way better about it, way more supportive when we both made it together for a specific reason that benefits, you know, that ideally benefits our family. And I just, I've seen it over and over again. the, The communication, just like any other aspect of a relationship, communication is key. Finances is definitely right up there with the, with the most important. And and when you, it's that feeling of, again, I, I said, I'll say it again, that being on the same team, um, when you feel that way, like all your decisions feel stronger and you feel more confident, confident about the decisions you're making. So yes, communication. I appreciate you saying that. And a couple of things I've learned over the course of my life is, is one, the more frequency that you do something like that, the easier it happens. It, be, it becomes normal. Something else I've learned over the years is that most tough conversations, and some people will say many financial conversations are tough conversations because maybe they didn't have those conversations growing up. I learned that most co- tough conversations uh, take 10 minutes or less, right? But you got to uh, be willing uh, you got to be willing to have those conversations and also revealing when you share maybe what's going on if there are some fears, if you don't know what's going on in the workplace, if you're looking at that portfolio, well, sometimes when you share those things out loud to your point Chris about being on the same team, I've learned that revealing actually creates intimacy. It may start off as a little bit of friction, but revealing actually creates intimacy that, hey, hey, boo. I know that's what you, you always call your wife when we're together. You're like, hey, you always say, hey, boo. Of course. Um, it, it creates, <laughs> I can't wait for her to hear this. It creates intimacy. Hey. Yeah, um, actually, can I can I jump in real quick on that? Um, 
I couldn't agree more. You know, even if you're going to, I, I talked about making a decision that's going to benefit you and your family. Like, even if you're about to buy something, let's just say that is not going to benefit you or your family, like something, let's just say something material, right? If you just talk about it, something will be revealed. Why is it? Okay, why is it you want that? Well, because I'm feeling this way. Why are you feeling this way? Because X, Y, Z. And now all of a sudden, you know, your spouse can can help support you not feel like X, Y, Z is going to lead to that person. It's just you never know the gold that that is going to be revealed just by bringing it up and having the conversation. So, you know, couldn't agree yeah. more. Make those things frequent. Don't assume people know how you feel. Don't assume people know that you're having a bad day. We have to be vulnerable and be willing to share those things. And a great reminder, and this, this quote I'm about to share is attributed to a lot of people. The main person it's attributed to is Sigmund Freud, something to the tune of secrets make you sick. Secrets mm -hmm. make you sick. It creates anxiety. It creates acid reflux. It creates a bad night's rest. So be willing to share those things with your spouse, your partner, your community, your family, even if it is a little bit uneasy. Chris, something you know we talked about in advance is during times like these, you, you said something to the tune of make sure, however you're feeling right now, to file this feeling of unpreparedness in your mind so something like this doesn't happen again. It's like you don't want to experience a, a, a hurricane without a generator two times, right? The first <laughs> time, right. first right. time, okay. <laughs> Second time, you're not catching the kid without a generator. What, what, I, I, what, what more could you add to that? Well, there's going to be a time, hopefully in the not too distant future, but none of us know, where things are going to get easier again. And we're going to, and it's going to, we're going to forget about how we're feeling or what's happening during this, during this tough time. So, you know, let's think about by 2013, we weren't talking about what was going on in 2008 and 2009 every day. Right. And it's just really easy and life goes on. You get caught up again and you're just, you know, you you just forget the further away you we're, we get from this reception recession, the less we'll think about it. And um, look, if, if you don't feel prepared this time, don't, don't let it happen. Don't, don't put yourself in a situation to feel the same way ever again. It's kind of like in sports, Antonio, you and I are big football fans we have a big game this weekend coming up, Michigan versus Ohio State. It's go that blue. it's go blue. Let's go. Um, it's that feeling of when when you lose, don't forget what that feels like because you can use that for to benefit yourself. You can it's a powerful thing. And uh, I just want to encourage people if you're not feeling prepared right now, if you're going through tough times, <clears throat> um, I I feel for you. And let's try to let's try to make sure that we're not in the situation again. Because here's another thing that I'll tell you. Things are going to get better and we're going to forget about this. And this time, how we're feeling right now is going to happen again as well. I said <laughs> earlier, once every six years. So you know it's coming. It's not if, it's when. So let's prepare. Breaking news. This is going to happen a few more times in your <laughs> lifetime. Be prepared. I love what you just said. You know, remember how it feels right now. Like even as an athlete, remember how it feels to lose. I, I just had a quick flashback to like my college. Um, at track and field days, but more specifically to my, to my high school football days. And, and Chris was a, a collegiate athlete, was a quarterback and baseball player. But when we played, this is me, like the old guy story. When we played, if you lost a game, no one had a cell phone. So that bus ride back, you felt that loss. And you're like, I don't, you got, you had to feel it and be with it. Nowadays, somebody loses how quickly can they pull out the phone or something or go to Amazon Prime, something or Netflix to distract them from feeling that we need to feel this more so we don't and not distract ourselves. Like, listen, we, we're preaching here today, Chris. You got me fired up. Last question for you. Of course, the work that, that you do is so critical in supporting families and uh, not just being re responsible, but also really living and accomplishing their dreams, they're living the life they, they, they want to live. Something you shared with me a long time ago that's always stood out, and I just would like to end on you sharing this, this perspective, especially in a time like now. And listen, let's say this out loud. Is it possible to be recession-proof? Probably not. Everyone can be hit in a tough economy. You can talk about that for a moment if you want, Chris. But can you just talk about how financial planning and life planning are one in the same. Yeah, absolutely. That, that answer your first question, no. There's no such thing as being recession-proof. 
I don't care who you are in what or what you do in some way or how wealthy you are in some way, shape or form. Every single one of us is being impacted by this recession. I even thought of I'm like, can I think of one occupation that is not impacted or impact? Look, and I, do you know what I thought of a bankruptcy attorney? If you're a bankruptcy attorney, <laughs> you're probably pretty excited about what's going on right now. Oh, my gosh. But even that person is paying higher gas prices is paying, you know, more for everything that we're buying. Even that person has a family member that's losing the job or, you know, whose business is, is uh, being negatively impacted. The point is, no, there's no such thing as being recession proof. We can only do, uh, do what we can, do the best we can. Uh, but financial planning and life planning being one and the same. I mean, like I put financial, I put finances up there. I, I've been saying this for a while. I'm really passionate about it. Here's my, here's my logic. If stress is the number one cause of disease, and finances, personal finance, is the number one cause of stress, then can't we all agree that personal finances, a financial planning, is literally preventing disease? I mean, to me, that seems pretty simple. And so I think it's it's all about, you know, I, I mean, view my role or any financial planner's role as alleviating fear and anxiety. At the end of the day, that's what we're, that's what we're really doing. And, and yeah, what's it all for? Financial planning and life planning, too. You can so what's all the money for? That answering the money, or excuse me, answering the question, what is all the money for? What do I really? What are my core values? What are my 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 dreams? What do I want to accomplish? That's way more challenging than answering the financial questions. So that's what I have to say about that. That's great. I love it. And this is a perfect moment for Chris and I to invite you to our three week boot camp. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, we got that. Uh, we got that uh, timeshare that uh, we're going to send you a link. <laughs> we're going to send you a you link on that. And if you sign up your friend, you can also get paid. And then when your <laughs> friend signs up a friend, they can get paid as well. <laughs> hey, we're not offering you nothing but what you just heard. And I think you heard so much goodness over the course of these little over 30 minutes. Chris, I can't thank you enough for all that you do. I can't thank you enough for joining me. I'm sure the people who are listening to this are going to get value out of this, whether it's right now listening or a year from now, et cetera, because everything you said now applies even when things are going quote unquote great. So I appreciate you for joining me. Thanks for having me, Antonio. This was fun. Hey, thank you so much for listening to that episode. I hope you got a lot of value out of it. If you want to learn more about that episode and learn more about Chris, just head on over to theantonionevs.com. Hey, we look forward to seeing you really soon with another episode of The Antonio Nev Show. Until then, I want you to remember that the best is ahead when you work and believe like the best is ahead, things begin to change for the better. Never forget, you have a say in this.